Ganudo Data Bytes. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode on Ganudo Data Bytes. This is your host Neha and we are very excited to welcome back our guest this week, Emily Sergeant, who is a sales engineer here at Ganudo. For our new listeners, Emily's professional experience spans over 20 years as a Java developer, data engineer and scrum master. Welcome back to our show, Emily. We are looking forward to our discussion on data mesh and why implementing it with data virtualization provides the right balance between IT control and domain responsibility. But before we begin our discussion, could you tell us a bit about yourself and your interest in the tech industry as well as your role here at Denodo for our new listeners? Thanks, Neha. Uh, So I started my career as a Java developer and I came to data engineering much later, uh, first working on the industrialization of BI projects, later on data warehouse design and so on. So for a long time, I actually wore both hats. I worked a little bit uh, with, I wrote a little bit of Java code. I wrote a little bit of SQL, uh, working principally with HR data. Uh, When I joined Nodo, I became a sales engineer. In that role, I get to help our potential customers explore our product and our data integration approach and work with all sorts of different kinds of data. And that's really what I like best about my new role. Over the years, I've discovered that software developers don't necessarily know much about data integration and data engineers don't necessarily know much about software development. I think they have a lot to learn from each other. All right, perfect. Thank you for sharing, Emily. So that brings us to a topic of discussion today on data mesh and why the there is a need for data virtualization. Many enterprises are investing in a next generation data lake, hoping to democratize data at scale to provide business insights and ultimately make automated intelligent decisions. This is where data mesh comes in as a concept. Data mesh was conceptualized by Zamak Degani back in May 2019 when she was with ThoughtWorks as an alternative to the centralized paradigm of a lake or its predecessor data warehouse. Zamak Degani further revealed that despite the time money and effort data warehouses and data lakes fail when applied at scale and speed of today's organizations. So to build on this in such a scenario, why do you think data mesh is a better choice? First, it's important to understand what we mean when we talk about data mesh. It's as much an organizational principle as an architecture, and it uses four core concepts. The first is the concept of business domains. So I mentioned earlier that data engineers and software developers have a lot to learn from one another, but they're both technical. And I think that technical people in general have a lot to learn from business analysts. Uh, Business analysts and experts are really the people who know the data. And core to the data mesh is the idea of a business domain where subject matter experts who are business experts who understand the data help the domain manage their own data. So there's really this responsibility for the data which is delegated to the different domains. The second important concept is data as a product. So subject matter experts within the domains build and package their data into easily consumable data products which can be accessed by people throughout the organization. So if I'm a subject matter expert, for example, in a uh, supply chain domain, my data products may be the actual physical products that my company sells, maybe suppliers, maybe physical warehouses where uh, uh, products and parts are stored. And the description of all those different products is something that I will build and I will build in a way that I can share with people who may be outside of my domain. The third important concept is self-service. So in order for data to be useful throughout an organization, data products need to be discoverable and understandable by anyone, even people who are not familiar with the domain, so that they can be combined, reused, repackaged by anyone, and people really have them available, whatever their data analysis needs may be. And the fourth concept is federated governance. So governance is sort of a catch-all phrase, and it's really a huge topic. It includes security, interoperability, traceability, basically a lot of rules and best practices which become critical in any enterprise data architecture. So decentralize the conception and management of data products, but the governance needs to be centrally managed. Uh, Basically, these rules and best practices need to be global to the organization as a whole. So if you compare data mesh to sort of a traditional monolithic data platform, like you mentioned, a centralized data warehouse or a data lake, it's kind of like the difference between a giant supermarket with all sorts of products from everywhere. Obviously, provisioning those products will involve long and flexible supply chains. And you can compare that with a data mesh, which is more like farmer's market, where 
producers bring locally produced goods. The infrastructure in the second case is lighter. There's still centralized governance. There may be set market days for the farmer's market, a building structure. There'll be stalls, a common cur uh, currency, of course. But the products are fresher. You're in direct contact with the people who know those products well. And ultimately, they're more reliable. So that's the idea of a data mesh in a certain sense. Wonderful example. Thank you for explaining that, Emily. Can you tell us about creating data products with Denodo? So first of all, you need to understand what data integration with Denodo looks like. So Denodo allows you to define a semantic layer, a universal semantic layer, which maps physical data in one or potentially many different systems to a single data model. So you may be working with data that comes from SAP. If you're in a supply chain uh, domain, you may be working with HR data. That data may be in data lakes, data warehouses different backend systems and you can define views data services and relationships over this data no matter where it resides behind the, the scenes denota will translate any requests for the data to the protocols that are understood by these different systems does that automatically it also automatically optimizes access to the data because once the data is distributed of course optimization becomes very important so coming back to your question a data product needs to provide useful data in a coherent package to the larger organization. But here the what is more important than the how. If I'm a subject matter expert in the HR domain, my data products may be employees, work contracts, org charts, and so on. How the data is physically stored, if it's in an on-premises HR system, in a cloud data warehouse, in a data lake, it shouldn't concern the users of the data. That's where Domino's semantic layer has an important role to play because we separate the what of the product definition, which may be a Denodo view, for example, from the how of the physical infrastructure and where that data is stored. Another important concept when defining data products is interoperability. So anyone who's built a classical data warehouse knows that this isn't an easy problem to solve. How do you align and combine data coming from different places that may evolve at different cadences, that may come in different formats, and so on? So this is where the semantic layer is also super important because all these rules of transformation, of correlation, et cetera, they're defined within the semantic layer. And uh, they define, essentially, how data products work together so that users don't have to implement those rules themselves. Perfect. And how about maintaining a domain's autonomy? So that's where the semantic layer and the abstraction and separation which it provides is really super important because you basically have the implementation of a data product and its outside facade that are separated. So with that abstraction in place, domains can migrate their data, they can change backend systems, they can provision data products differently, all without impacting the users because the end users, they don't see those backend systems. What they interact with is Denodo. Could you tell us a little bit about data mesh in the context of the need for self-service. So there are three aspects of self-service, which are particularly important. The first is discoverability, and the second, which kind of goes hand in hand with the first, is documentation. So ideally, a user should be able to find trusted data products via a keyword search mechanism, so it's sort of centralized. And once they've discovered it, they should be able to understand the product and how it works. Uh, they should have some information about its sourcing, about its implementation, and so on. And in order for this to be useful, it needs to be centralized. It needs to be across all of the domains. And that's where Denodo provides a, a data catalog feature, which which basically makes that semantic layer I mentioned before available in a business user-friendly interface. And the final aspect of self-service is interoperability, as I mentioned before. Uh, so that interoperability is built in to the semantic layer, but it's navigable within the data catalog. So basically relationships between different data products are codified as relationships, which define joins between data products. And that allows business users to just drag and drop and combine the different data products transparently. Great. In a way, like, you know, data mesh and data virtualization go hand in hand. And uh, because of the self-service feature, data, like the entire amount of data available with an organization is accessible. And it's just a click away, right? Exactly. Exactly. So the universal semantic layer, the optimizer, uh, and then, of course, this data catalog piece allow users to navigate seamlessly across everything that's been provided by the different domains. Perfect. That's wonderful. So could you tell us about how data virtualization helps organizations ensure that their data stays safe in data mesh configurations? Can you share some use cases or case studies with us today? 
Okay, so as I mentioned before, there are certain aspects of security and governance that need to be managed centrally. So a simple example, of course, is authentication. A data platform needs to integrate with LDAP and other corporate authentication mechanisms. And beyond authentication, there's authorization to consider. So how do you guarantee, for example, for, for GDPR compliance, that all personal data is properly masked? So this is where a centralized system needs to work with the domain. So if you take the example again of an HR domain, there's clearly sensitive data involved. There's personal data, which is concerned by, you know, which is which is regulated by GDPR, but there's also things like salary information. So an HR subject matter expert knows which data needs to be masked and how, but they don't know how to integrate with LDAP. They don't want to know, they don't need to know, and they don't know what products from other domains may also include GDPR personal data. So a system which allows data to be identified for masking at a product level by subject domain experts, and then have the masking rules and the authentication managed centrally is really perfect here. And Denoto allows us via fine-grained security mechanisms, which allow you to define masking rules at column, row, and value level, but also to define via tag. So you can tag as a domain expert to personal data, for example, across all of your data products, and then the rule is managed centrally. So that's one use case. And another use case is data which is stored in different geographic locations. This is something we're seeing more and more. For example, a non-aggregated personal data can't leave a particular geographic zone, uh, such as the country of origin. It needs to stay in that country and not be visible outside of it. So when you have, when you're confronted with this case, Denoto allows subject matter experts in different geographies to define data products with the right level of granularity, the right level of aggregation to ensure compliance. Clients. Those are two ways that we really give you the flexibility you need to define the security rules with this shared responsibility between domains and centralized IT. Wonderful. Thank you, Emily. This has been a great session. I'm sure our audience would have enjoyed learning about how data mesh and data virtualization go hand in hand. Um, before we wrap up our session, we would love to do a quick Q&A round with you. Are you ready for this? Sure. Awesome. So my first question for you is, what is a favorite book of yours? Okay, well, I've been living in Paris for almost 20 years now, but I'm originally, as you can hear from, from my accent, I'm originally from the United States, and I'm actually specifically from Seattle, Washington. So I love reading stories about the American West. And in my opinion, one of the absolute best novelists of the uh, of the American West is Wallace Stegner. I recently read um, his uh, novel Angle of Repose, which tells a story of a woman from the East Coast who makes a new life in the West. And while I kind of went in the opposite direction in my life, I, I really recognize a lot of her struggles for self-invention in, in, in that story. So I highly recommend it. Wow, sounds like a great read. That's wonderful. And uh, can you tell us about a value or a principle that has helped you move ahead in your career? Um, well, we talk a lot about new paradigms and disruption in this industry, and we like to pretend that everything is constantly being reinvented. This time, everything's different and so on. And I believe, actually, that a lot of the good ideas that you see in technology at any given moment in time, and I believe this more and more in my career, actually, Data Mesh is a good example. They're inspired by things that have been around for a longer time in different ways throughout the years. So I guess my principle is don't throw out a good idea, just build on it. That's very true. I agree with you. So what a fun session, Emily. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us about Data Mesh and data virtualization today. Thanks a lot. And a quick message to our listeners. If you've enjoyed this episode, please head over to www.denoto.com slash podcast to find out more resources on all things data.